Yo, what's going on my fellow gamers? Gid here, signing in to Disney Heroes Battle Mode. Thanks for checking in. As you can see, the snow is falling, December is upon us, and the server merger is just around the corner. Oh, server merger. But before we get to all that, I want to take a look at a very special hero slash villain, mostly villain, um, the, the one that I would like to call the Power Creep, and that would be none other than Randall Boggs, a top player by default, simply because he is too good to pass up. He is a classic example of how the heroes and villains of today outclass, outshine that original roster. Sorry Felix, I don't think no amount of Hero Refresh is going to put you on par with this guy. So, let's take a quick look at his skills, and then the discs, and we're going to walk through one of his friendship disc missions from start to finish, because you know how I roll, and that's part of it. So, Scream Selection, his active skill, Fantastic Damage, Player chooses an enemy, Randall becomes invisible, crawls to that enemy, he then becomes visible, scaring nearby enemies for 10 seconds, dealing a bunch of damage to the chosen target, and then while on auto, Randall chooses the enemy with the most hit points. But if it's not auto and you're in a mode where you can actually pick, this is a really good ability for taking out squishy targets, support heroes, healers, etc. Because uh, they can't really handle his damage too well, and he does a lot of it. So. His active attack throws on a scare. This is important to remember. Disappearing act. So Randall begins each wave camouflage, so he starts off for 12 seconds of invisibility at the beginning of a wave. He takes 75% less damage, has 50% chance to dodge disables while invisible, and while invisible he's also untargetable, so it's not really likely that he's gonna get affected by anything anyway, cause uh, heroes can target him. And the damage reduction while invisible is less effective against uh, when he's damaged by enemies that are higher than whatever level you currently are with him. So, you know, player level plus skill up to max, etc. Uh, great, a very long invisibility. No problem right there. Starting the wave with that. This is why he's super useful as a solo hero or villain, or in a small team with uh, more of a focus on them, which actually just means that the um, active bar gets built up faster, and why he can single-handedly take out teams by himself, because he gets 12 seconds to do whatever the heck he wants at the start of a wave. No problem. Monster Punch. Another fantastic damage attack, a passive. Randall dodges a melee attack and then counterattacks, dealing a ton of damage. He can only dodge an attack once every 6 seconds, except when his hit points below 65% of his max hit point. Then the cooldown is half the time for 3 seconds. Well, that's an added bonus, especially as it ties into color change. So this one's great. Once per battle, when Randall reaches zero, he revives, so he has a revive. He'll then heal himself. For that ends up being less than half of his hit points at um, this current power and level. After reviving, Randall becomes invisible for 9 more seconds, and he does 200% more damage to scared enemies. So, I think that actually is in effect all the time. I'm not 100% sure if that's tied to the revive. Someone who knows better than I could answer that, but I think that's just par for the course for him is he just does 200% more damage to scared enemies. It doesn't say that it's inclusive of the revive effect. So, what do we have? We have a revive, a couple invisibles, starts invisible, revives invisible, an active attack that puts scare on, he does 200% more damage to scared enemies, you can team him up with people that do scare, he does a ton of damage, and uh, yeah, he has one of the most, and I don't know what his red skill does, if it does exist, not server one, obviously. Won't be merging with server one, obviously. And uh, yeah, he just has one of the most comprehensive kits, super useful, lots of uh, synergy in his abilities with himself. Probably, arguably, one of the most self-sufficient heroes um, in my estimation. And will that always be the case? Ah, probably not, is it for now? Definitely still worth an investment. 
That's not even looking at his discs, so let's look at that. With his discs, he has a friendship with Yzma, and he has a friendship with Gaston. Perfect. So the Yzma disc, Transfiguration Time, true damage on basic attack. That's pretty great. At the start of every wave, his first seven basic attacks also deal additional true damage based on what you leveled up to. As for the stars, he has a 20% chance, and I believe it goes up by an additional 20% per star, to remove all active buffs from enemies he hits with his basic attack. So, him just punching your team removes their buffs. And if that's a 5 star, that's a pretty good ability to keep you mundane and non-powered up. Especially if he has a couple hastes in there, and he's just going to town. No problem. Tricks of the Trade is his Gaston disc. He dodges after Scream Selection. So this gives him basic damage, max hit points on the level up. For the stars, uh, when he becomes visible after using Scream Selection, he dodges all basic attacks and skills for a set amount of time. I think it's 1.5 seconds per star. So that goes up and it's just basically not invisible, but it's just like free invulnerability pretty much. Both these discs are fantastic. Both of them at five star are great. Both have use. Really, like sometimes heroes have a, a situational disc or a more situational disc and a good disc or a commonly used disc and a disc that's kind of trashy, but not Randall. Both of his discs could carry him the distance. Can't even argue that. So that's Randall. That's the power creep. Can't wait to see how the further heroes and villains keep getting better and more varied, although even with the recent ones that have come out, I think Randall's pretty hard to top. You'll still see ones like him and Jafar in a lot of team lineups, uh, while people still kind of figure out the duck synergies and whatnot, but uh, there's been a couple lately, and it seems to be villains, not so much heroes, that just have these crazy kits that just make them really powerful and um, definitely worth looking into. So that being said, let's tackle one of these friendship campaigns. Let's tackle the Yzma friendship campaign. They're both purple. I like the idea of the true damage. So let's, uh, oh, and the debuff. So let's, let's hit that up. Also, please let me know in the comments below your thoughts on Randall Boggs. And if there's any other heroes or villains that you think are a uh, very excellent representation of power creep and way more powerful than they should be. Alternatively, let me know what hero or villain from the old roster should get a total revamp to put them on par with uh, these new heroes and villains or the first one. Okay, episode one. Power Planned, and the campaign is called Power Struggle. Okay, they're chatting. My Yzma voice can't really do. Randall, I've come up with something, something guaranteed to make me the empress of this sad city. What if I told you that you could take control of the power plant and I would be the empress in one foul swoop? Interesting, Yzma. I didn't think you even understood what we use energy for in the first place. Don't underestimate me, you serpent. Or should I say, future royal energy advisor serpent. Oh, these two. Very slick. Let's see, level 122, 08, one star. Okay, power plan. Yzma explains her plan to Randall step by step. Kind of what just happened. Oh, the enemy power versus the team power. All right, well, we'll fight this one out just for fun. After that, I imagine... Oh, auto's off. Fine. Let's roll the dice. Spin, 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 spin. Oh, she blew herself up. So long, Cubs. Oh, that was easy. Take 
pick the right transfiguration potion. Very important. Quick fight, quick fight, quick fight. Oh, that was easy. Need that button. They make a vat of the potion of their choice. Quick fight. Oh. <laughs> Is it even having to think about that? They make this faster. Step three. They disperse the potion in the water main that leads to the power plant and transform everyone who works in the plant. There's a water main that leads strictly to a power plant? Hooray! Friend level up. Once no one is left to run the plant, Randall becomes the only option left to do the job. Once they run the power, they run the city. This is a very interesting plan. Hey, these enemies got weaker. Finally, I'll get to really stick it to Wazowski and Sullivan. When can we start? Well, first we have to pick the form that will be most humiliating. Something that can't retaliate. Yes, what about a cat? That human girl always seems to be calling Sullivan Kitty. It'd be poetic. I was thinking something to show them how small they are compared to us. An insect, perhaps? That's perfect. Episode 2. Recipe for Disaster. Yzma orders Kronk and Fungus to mix every insect transfiguration potion into one large vat. Oh, Jack Skellington. How I have not powered you up. They scurry around the room gathering the different insect extracts. As they pour the extracts into the vat, Kronk can tell that the mixture is going to taste hideous. Kronk looks around for some ingredients to improve the taste of it. Something is missing. Kronk spices the mixture up with some extra time. It smells ready. Kronk, where is the mixture? I can't wait another minute to become Empress. And for me to become Energy Advisor, don't forget that. Don't forget you serve the Empress now. Go help him bring the vat up here. Time to get a move on. Randall, what have you got yourself into? Episode 3, Tricky Transport. Yzma refuses to walk all the way to the power plant, so she orders Kronk to get her carriage. Kronk, carrying the vat in his arms and Yzma on his back, begins to head toward the power plant with Fungus leading the way. Friend level up. A group of creeps notices them and takes off toward the caravan and cuts them off. At the sight of them, Randall turns invisible. Kronk charges forward and fights off the creeps with only his feet, while Randall sweeps his tail to trip them.
As Kronk and Randall walk over the defeated creeps, they spot the power plant in the distance. What is this? The power plant is over there. Why have we stopped? Are you joking? We can't just put it directly in their water. We need to put it in the water main that serves the power plant. Do you mean we're going down there? In the sewer? Absolutely not! Fine. I guess I have to do everything, don't I? Episode 4, Taste Test Randall enters the sewer vent and Yzma and Kronk follow. As they descend, they find a group of creeps waiting for them. Creeps be everywhere. Herc, how did he get roped into this mess? Kronk puts down the vat and begins to fight the creeps. Randall turns invisible and begins to help, but Yzma just stands there watching. Randall comments snidely that she could help a little, but by the time he finishes his comment, the creeps are all defeated. Randall finds the water main and he and Kronk begin to pour the vat of potion into the water supply. Kronk takes a big gulp as a final taste test. He utters, delectable, and then puffs into a little butterfly. Well then, now that Kronk is a butterfly, which one of you is going to carry me the rest of the way? Absolutely not. If we showed up carrying you, they'd know something was up. You'll have to change into something less conspicuous. I can turn visible, but let's just say you stand out. I'll assume that is a compliment. I'm sure I can find something in here that matches your peasant standards. Episode 5, Disguise Dilemma Yzma rummages through her outfits, trying them on to see if they are suitable disguises. Each outfit is gaudier than the last. Randall disapproves of each outfit until the very last one. Her face in anguish, she comes out wearing Kronk's chef outfit. Randall smiles and tells her it's perfect. They approach the power plant and Randall turns invisible. He does that a lot. They enter unnoticed. Once they make it in, they find a lookout over the laughing floor and wait to watch the workers transform into insects. That was easy! These peasants couldn't spot royalty if it smacked them right in the face. If you don't quiet down, I'm going to smack you right in the face. Oh, save it. Soon we'll have the whole city eating out of the palm of our hands. Yeah, but for now, we need to see if this plan of yours really worked. Your. Of course it's going to work. My potions are flawless. Any moment now, these monsters will become the little bugs they are. Episode 6, 
transfiguration time. Moments later, the monsters return to the laughing floor from their lunch break. Randall spots Mike and Sully walking to their door. Throughout the floor, monsters begin to shrink and shrivel into the forms of tiny insects. In an instant, Mike Wazowski has morphed into a little green ladybug and Sully into a blue and purple caterpillar. I could see that. Oh, we lost! Herc, you let me down. I'm not sure what the problem was. That played out fairly easily. Randall scurries down to the laughing floor and finds the bugs Mike and Sully turned into. Yzma follows him. Here we are, Sullivan. Finally, I got to show you who the best scarer is. Ha! Now that they're out of the way, it's time to begin our final step. Take over the city. What do you think? Should we squash them all or keep them in a jar? Episode 7, Turned Tables. Yzma takes off her chef's hat and a butterfly flies out from underneath it. No question there. Yzma tries to swat it. The moment she hits it, it transfigures back into the shape of Kronk. Uh-oh, I think we found the flaw in this plan. Yzma and Randall, shocked, begin to realize what's going on. Suddenly, all the monsters on the laughing floor begin to poof back into their original monster form. They're in for it now. Now, surrounded, Yzma and Randall are face to face with Mike and Sully. Randall, you creep! You'll resort to any dirty tactics to take us down, won't you? Mark my words, Sullivan. I'll be on top one of these days. Yeah, yeah, we've heard it a million times. Now get out of here. Scram! Episode 8. Dejected and Defeated.
The group of monsters calmly yet forcefully escort Yzma and Randall to the door of the power plant. With the doors shut behind them, Yzma begins to berate Kronk. Kronk reveals that he added thyme and some other ingredients to the mixture to make it taste better. Yzma yells at Kronk, explaining that time is the one thing that always reduces the time that the potions last. Silly yet logical. Randall, annoyed at the fighting, begins to slink away with fungus. And you! Why didn't you squish those bugs while we had the chance? Victory was in our hands. I should have known better than to believe this was going to work out, Empress. However, Randall, now we know they're weak to my potions. If we try again without Krunk's assistance, they'll be permanently defeated. Hmm, you might be right. They'll be expecting the same strategy, but if we come up with another plan, perhaps. Let's get to work. What a team. Friend campaign complete. Transfiguration time. And there you have it. True damage on basic attack. I need to star this one up and level it up, add some true damage to the mix. Overall, an awesome disc. Next stop, not sure, I got a few discs to catch up on. It's time to kick it into overdrive. Fellow gamers, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. I have a lot more content to cover, a lot more videos to make. We're going to try and kick this channel into high gear. Let's see if I can't hit that 1,000 subscriber mark this year. Thanks again for watching, and keep on gaming.